Hello and welcome to the second episode to learn how to program from scratch. Today we are going to learn about variables, printing stuff on the screen, and uh, data types. You should already have your Thony environment installed from the previous video. If you didn't, then go there and install it. Let's get into it. So first of all, let's print something on the screen. For example, print hello world. If we run this, clicking here on the run button, we will see that it's printed on the screen here, hello world. Basically what is happening here is a print is a function and functions are like a chunk of code with a name. So we will explore this later in the future. But uh, think about this as a functionality that has a label, a name, in this case it's called print, and the format of this has a parenthesis here, the curl, uh, curl parenthesis, and inside these parentheses there is a parameter. So functions receive a parameter and provide an output. And in this case the parameter is hello world. And hello world is a string. We will get into all of these, no worries. So think about this. The function is like a black box. It has a name and we introduce some data. In this case, hello world. And it produces an output. It does something with that data. In this case, printed it on the screen here, hello world. Let's add another line, for example, print, today is sunny, and we run this. Then we have the two lines, right? Hello world and today is sunny. You can see here on the left that we have numbers for each line. This is very useful because, first of all, we can tell somebody else a particular thing in our code in which line it is located, and also, for example, here, if I remove one of the um, double quotes, Thony is already smart enough to tell us, hey, this is a problem, this is an error, you, you should put something there. But if we run this anyway, Python is going to tell us there is an error, it's a syntax error, and it's telling us where that error is located, and it's also telling us that this is on line number two. So we know where in our code that syntax error is located. So we just go here, add our double quote, run again, and everything should be fine. Now let's see that we want to do something a little bit more interesting. For example, we have here, uh, hello, we are learning how to program in Python. And this is just going to print that on the screen. Let's say that tomorrow we are learning another programming course, and in this case is in Java. So if we run this, we have learning Python, learning Java. As you can see, it would be handy if we can create and make this part here that doesn't change into a template, something that we can reuse every time so we don't have to type it all over again. To do that, we can use which is called an F string. So here we put an F, okay, pay attention to this. The place we want to use as a placeholder, we have curly brackets. Let's remove this line. And here, let's create which is called a variable. Okay, so what is going to happen here is a variable, which I'm going to explain to you now in a minute what it is, it holds the value, holds a piece of data. And this piece of data is a string called Python. And the F string is for format. So it's telling this string has a format, it has a placeholder here. And we want to make this word Python here appear inside this placeholder. But because this data here is referenced by this variable called language, what we have to do is put language in there. So if we run this program, we will see that the output is the same as we had before. But in this case, it's hello, we're learning how to program in Python. And Python is the value of this variable language. If we remove this, and change that for, for example, Java, we run again, we have that replace here in the placeholder. Now, if we remove the F, well, and we run this, we will have the template format printed on the screen because a string doesn't really know and understand the meaning of things. It just prints whenever is inside the double quotes. So now let's see and learn what a variable is. So what is a variable? First, we need to understand how the memory in the computer works. And imagine the memory is a huge shelf. In each empty space of this shelf, we can put anything we want. Let's say a character or a number 
or a string. Anything. And in order to find that information, because the memory of the computer is huge, we need to find a way to address this. So as you can see, in every slot, we have a number that is going to indicate where the address, where that particular information is located. But of course, with such a huge amount of memory, we will have very massive numbers to address each particular uh, space in this massive shelf. So in order to make this operation easier, you have something called a variable. And a variable is like a label, a name that you put to that particular memory location. So don't worry now internally how that really works inside the computer. This That will be a more advanced topic. But for now, just to understand how it works, think that that variable contains a value. And that value, whatever is in there, either a string, a number, whenever, that thing that is in that variable exists somewhere in the memory of your computer. And the way to find that is because Python knows and smart enough internally knows where that variable is pointing in inside that particular place in the memory. So you don't have to worry about where things are, uh, addresses, memory addresses, or anything like that. And if you go to a different computer, which has a different way of managing the memory, you don't even have to worry about that because you only worry about the variable name, that label. So that's why it's very important that you use a name which is consistent. For example, something for a value for temperature, you're going to call it temperature. Don't call it T or anything like that, because you want to know what that value is for, and you want to other people to understand it and yourself to understand it, because you're going to use a variable as well in many parts of the code. So it's important you keep consistent with that. So now variables, as I said before, can contain any kind of data. But for now, let's focus only on these three kinds of data. So one is a string, and a string is anything from one character, or it could be a series of words. And you can see in a string, you can have spaces, um, one word, two or more, or even it could be an empty string as well which is just empty, no characters in it. But the, the point is that anything that you can type basically on the keyboard, anything that you can print on the screen is a string, just as a general kind of idea. It can be any language as well. You can have ideograms or any alphabet of any other language. So all of that goes in, the, in a string, doesn't have any logical meaning. The only meaning it has is this is a string, is a array, a concatenation of characters, or maybe one or empty, and that's it. That's all it cares about. And that's it's called string. Next type is int. And an int is a number like 1, 3, 42, but not a number like 1.2, not a decimal part. Okay, It's talking about a number that is whole and don't have any decimal part on it. That is an integer. For example, you want to give some use a data for someone's age. Usually we refer to people like someone is like, you know, 20 years old, 40 years old. We don't say like it's 42.35. No, we don't use that. So for an age, for example, we use the uh, an integer. For a year, we use an integer as well. We could say it's 2022, 2023 or whenever. But we don't say 2022.5, right? So for that particular kind of data, we use an integer. Now for numbers that has a decimal part, we use fluid. And that would be a number like, well, for example, 1.2, 3.14, or whenever. This could be, for example, um, uh, a currency, a price. It could be uh, the temperature. Any number that actually makes sense, that has a decimal part, then we use a float. So it's important we keep consistency of these data types because it means that the operations that we are going to perform has to be consistent with the kind of data we are going to operate with. And that's all you need to know about variables and data types for now. There are more and things can get more complicated. But for now, that is, remember, date a variable just is a label, a name you choose, and to reference some data somewhere in memory. You reuse it, you put operate with it or around, and that variable will contain data which is of a particular kind, of a particular type, which is called type of data. And it could be a string. It could be an integer, it could be a float. Now, there are more. We're just going to focus on these ones. And during the course, we're going to expand all this knowledge as we use it. 
Okay, now that we understand what variables and data types are, let's see something a little bit more interesting. So for example, if we print this, so here the result of 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay, we are adding the result directly into the string. So with the knowledge we already have, what can we do here? Well, we can create a variable called result, and we don't just add value to this variable, we can add an expression, something that can be calculated, can be computed. So for example, 2 plus 2. And then we have to make this string into an F string. And then here, in where is 4, we replace it with result. If we run this, we have the same output as before, but the difference is that this result comes from this variable and the value of this variable is the computation, is a calculation of these 2 plus 2. If I change here and put, for example, 2 per 3 and run this again, we will have the result 2 plus 2 is 6, which of course we understand is, is wrong, this statement here. But from the programming point of view, there is nothing wrong here because we are basically calculating this, adding this to the variable. The variable goes here in the placeholder and it's going to be printed on the screen. Okay. Let's try something a little bit different. For example, let's change these and say like the value of result is, and we have here result. So let's change these and put result, for example, two plus two as before. If we run then the value of result is four, it's two plus two, that's fine. Now let's say two plus a, okay? So remember data types, this is a string this is an integer. So what we are doing here is adding a number to the letter A from as a string. That doesn't make much sense. We cannot really calculate that. This is one thing is like one apple plus another apple is two apples. But imagine like an apple plus a horse. What that would be a like horse pull or an apple horse, an apple horse designed by apple. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. So here we have a, like we need to actually be consistent and have data types which are uh, compatible. In this case, we can't print this at all. If we try, we are going to get an error. So the error is going to be here uh, unsupported operand plus from int and string. So basically, we're sending us that the operand plus doesn't understand how to calculate from an integer and a string. Now let's say that we want to calculate 2 plus 2.5. So if we run this, we have no problem. We have that the result is 4.5. What happens here is that, okay, we have two different types. So you might ask, well, you said before that we need to be consistent. Yeah, but there are types we, the operand here, the plus knows how to deal with this situation. So what we are doing here is that this is an integer, but this is a float. It's a number with a decimal. And so, we what it's doing is finding the solution that doesn't make data to be lost. For example, here we have 2 plus 2.5. It will convert these two in internally into 2.0 and create the, the and, and do the operation. The fact is that if we try to convert this one instead into an inter integer, we will remove basically the five or actually maybe transform this into a three. So we don't want to do that because data will be altered, data is going to be lost. So it's smart enough to do the conversion by itself. It's highly recommended not to just uh, delegate on this and trust on this because you want to be consistent in showing exactly what you want to show. You want to uh, describe in your code exactly your intentions. So it's important not to let things happen like a collateral change by the system. Okay. You can also play here down in the shell, but basically this is the Python interpreter itself. You can communicate with the interpreter directly. So as I said before, when we were installing Thony, remember that anything you type here is going to get lost and everything that you have up here, on the other hand, is going to remain because you save that into a file. But here, for example, we can do some uh, experiments. Let's say create a variable called number and call it number is equal to one press enter, you see no error, everything is fine. Now there is a function called type, which is very useful. So if we put type and the name of the variable, 
is going to return and tell us what type, what data type the variable is. In this case, number is type int. Forget about the class part here. We will get into that later. So now they change number and so the number is equal to 1.5. If we do the same and press and type type number, we will get here class, uh, the, the type is a float. So because we are, have a decimal part, it's a float. So if we change this, for example, and say number now is equal to, and we put 1.5 in double quotes, well, when we ask for type again, we see that it's a string. So as you can see, even if it's a number in our heads, for, for the system it isn't, because it's in double quotes, so it's a string. It doesn't have any numerical um, and meaning at all. It's a string. A string is the same. It doesn't matter if it's a number, if it's a symbol, if it's a letter, if it's an ideogram. It doesn't really matter. It's a string. It's a string. If you remove the double quotes, then it will be interpreted as a float. Before we finish this episode, one more thing before we finish is that we can add comments to our code. For that, we use this symbol here, which is the number symbol, the hashtag. Um, I read that actually it's real name, or it could be Octothorpe, and I'm sure no one is gonna understand that. It's not that common, but anyway, you know that you're very used to this probably for putting to put hashtags in social media. So this, uh, if we type this character and anything we add after it, yeah, we can type anything, it's not going to affect our program at all. Python is going to completely ignore whatever is there. And this is useful for adding comments in our code. So for example, we can create these and put like, say like um, this result and we can add a comment for ourselves or somebody else. This result is the meaning of blah, 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 whenever. So someone comes later and see our code and see the comment understands what that piece of code is doing. Also for ourselves, because trust me, after a certain period of time, if you don't touch your own code, you will forget what your code was doing. Don't go to like, uh, don't exaggerate in comments, write too many of them, because many times it's not necessary, especially if the code is pretty obvious, but don't go too short on, the, of, on them either. You might read somewhere people saying like, no, code should be self, uh, comment itself, self-explanatory. Self well, yes and no, you can have that. It's a code is very well written. It's very logical, the process that it follows. But as soon as something becomes a little bit obscure and difficult, or it's something that is connected with something else and we don't have the full picture, the full context, it's always useful to have some comments and add some information of what that function is doing, that piece of code is doing for ourselves and mostly for other people as well. So they can see our code and understand what is happening. So if you want to write one more line of this, you need to add another hashtag symbol and keep writing whenever you want. There are other ways of commenting code, but for now we are going to focus on only this one, which is the easiest. This wraps it up for now and thank you for watching.